Captain Dave here with Third Wave, and today I'm going to have a look at the water performance of the Shenzhen Think Touch 21.5 inch uh, touchscreen open frame monitor. This has been special ordered. It has uh, high end features, including bonded um, sensor to the LCD. It's got a nice 2.5 inch, uh, 2.5 millimeter, I should say, um, 7H hardness cover glass, and a soda lime cover glass. So yeah. nice and nice and hard, yeah. nice and sturdy. Um, and uh, it's got a UV overlay on it, and and also uh, it's got a high brightness BOE, um, 1,000 nit. LCD monitor, and so it's you know it's going to be a pretty good unit even if it doesn't pass all the tests. Um, and to be quite honest with you, I'm skeptical that it will, because I happen to work in the touch controller industry, and have for eight years now, so I kind of know how difficult it is for them to do. Before we get started, I wanted to thank Shenzhen Think Touch. I wanted to thank uh, Mr. Yo Yo Lee, who was the sales guy that that accepted my order you have to realize that i'm going to alibaba and just talking to random people there to see if they'll sell some guy quantity one of a custom-made thing and uh, nobody in the u.s would do it that's for sure so um you know whatever else happens today um at least uh you know the the, the alibaba guys um, they have to be given credit for doing the old college try um, and again, this was not an easy thing. So, without further ado, this is uh, just regular water in a spray bottle. And that uh, monitor is tilted at an angle, which would be pretty typical for the center console or for the console on um, the glass helm area of third wave. So, I'm going to spritz it with a little water like it was raining. And what we'll see here is if there's any ghost touches, um, we'll see color show up. You can see that white color show up. And so I'm going to clear that off the screen because I did that. That wasn't a ghost. And I'm going to continue spritzing it lightly like it would be a like a rain. So this, again, is better than most standard monitors touch screens will handle um, you know they, they'll usually start ghosting pretty badly um, with this amount of water on the screen I'm trying to get the, the drops to start rolling down which is where a lot of them have trouble still no ghosts there we go we're starting to get some water dripping down okay now it's hard to see it on this screen, so I'm going to take you back over to the this other screen where we can see a little bit clearer. Here, there's some ghosts. Here, some ghosts. Here, some ghosts. Okay. Now I'm going to clear the screen, and even though there's water rolling down the actual touch screen, we're not getting a ton of ghosts, but we are getting some. There's one right there. Okay, clear that off. And see another one popped up there. So clearly when I'm writing the software, I'll, I'll have to try and keep my touch buttons inside of the, of the range where the thing doesn't normally ghost. And touch screens do have a propensity to ghost in some places more than others. All right, so now I'm going to actually wipe the screen off. Right, so we just got rained on, and um, yeah, the touch screen performed okay, and now I've got to wipe this screen off. Okay, trying to be careful about it, but as you can see, I'm generating a bunch of ghost touches, and that's not good if the uh, console is you know, your primary control interface for everything. Okay, I'm all cleaned off. I'll clear the screen again, and it's back up to normal operation. 
Okay. You can see it's different colors, like I, like I said before, different colors based on the number of fingers you have down. All right, that was fresh water. The next test here will be a salt water test. So salt water is more difficult to reject on the touch screen than fresh water because it's conductive. And so if I spritz it on the screen like I was just doing a little spray, you know, got kicked a little spray over the side or something like that, I didn't get any false touches, okay? However, let's see what it looks if I then try and actually use it. Alright, well, we got some breaks, and it thinks two fingers are down in some cases. So, yeah, salt water is just pretty harsh. It's just a harsh test. Uh, there's a, a ghost right there that won't go away. Okay, by touching it, it went away. So, I'm going to hit it with some more salt. And if, so you can see if you get any real, real water on it, it forms hard, you know, finger dots. And if I clear it, yeah, any rolling water or anything like that brings them back. So, yeah, obviously, it performs better in fresh water than it does in salt. Um, but um, you know, in defense of these guys. Um, this is a very harsh environment, and the, the, the real problem with this is, of course, um, your best effort, really, if it's, unless it's good, I mean, unless it's perfect, isn't good enough, right? You can't have any ghosts ever to really have a screen like this be of much use in anything but a very protected environment. Maybe a flybridge or a flybridge with a hard top or a flybridge with curtains. Uh, if you took this screen and put it into, you know, a center console on a fishing boat, on a, you know, like an open fish, um, yeah, <laughs> I don't give, I don't give you much chance of, uh, of being able to use it in normal conditions. Um, and of course, this is the nerve center of your boat, right? So it, it just has to work. Um, in any case, um, I want to again thank Shenzhen Think Touch for creating this custom monitor for me. Like I said, they don't have to produce items in quantity one for people. And uh, I told them what I was gonna do with it. So they knew it was gonna be, you know, a challenge as well. And they took the challenge on. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not what they said it could do because in the uh, quote, they basically said it would be, you know, salt water and fresh water proof. And what turns out is that it's just not as bad as some other touch screens might be, but it's no way near saltwater, freshwater, you know, proof. And um, for a touch screen that's operating a whole boat, including starting the engines and stopping the engines and, you know, turning on switches and stuff, even one ghost touch can be a catastrophe. So um, anyway, that's the state of this right now. And um, I'm going to keep looking at ruggedized, marinized touchscreens. It's uh, we have to get to a point where we can cost-effectively install these in smaller boats, and you know have that available, that functionality available to us. And it's just the, just where it needs to go. Um, and um, anyway, so thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.